to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, I the glory, revive us again. Father, visit us tonight in this atmosphere. Bless our hearts. Reward our faith in you. Lord, I pray that everyone who has come tonight will go back with a testimony. We believe in you and we pray that once again you will show yourself mighty in our midst. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. While still standing, please let's honor again Apostle Goodheart and his dear wife, Pastor Bingo. Thank you so much. It's an honor. May God bless you. May God bless you in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. I'll teach for a few minutes and then we'll just pray and allow the Lord to step in and bless us as He always will. For just like the woman of God announced, for those of us who were not able to make the morning session, may I please request that you do well to listen to the session. It was. Um, I taught on experiencing personal revival and I did say I think yesterday and even this morning how that territorial revival first starts with personal revival you will never truly be able to plant revival across a territory except and unless you are revived yourself and we for the time that we had we shared two keys that were responsible for personal revival. Number one, the power of brokenness. And number two, the power of prayer. We did learn in the morning that brokenness starts with an awareness, a consciousness that man, unassisted by the help, the mercy and the grace of God is inadequate. And that there is nothing in yourself and by yourself that can close that gap. So brokenness is an awareness that translates to an acknowledgement of your limitation, your inadequacy outside of the help and the mercy of God. It's a state of realization. Then we did talk on the power of prayer. We were able to capture four dimensions 
that prayer covers in our lives number one transformation number two as a medium and a means for receiving promises and for making requests number three spiritual legislation that prayer allows and affords us the opportunity to make decrees and to create possibilities and the last warfare and intercession that prayer gives us an opportunity to stand in partnership with the spirit of god to ward off the arsenals of darkness that attempt to fight and attempt to thwart the purposes of god tonight very briefly there will be a charge i may not have the time to discuss the points in detail but i'm teaching on igniting and preserving territorial revivals now we have dealt with the subject of restoration day one or my session session one he restores my soul then personal revival and let's look at igniting and preserving territorial revivals we're learning by the spirit the keys that will help us to be able to preserve territorial revival second chronicles chapter 15 and verse 3 second chronicles chapter 15 and verse 3 let me start tonight by the bible says now for a long season israel had been without the true god without a teaching priest and without law three things that if absent it means that territory is already destroyed number one the awareness and the consciousness of the true god number two the presence of teaching priests and number three laws that help to govern that territory he said for a long season israel did not have any of the three the consciousness of the one true god the presence of teaching priests and laws i wrote here that kingdom advance is territorial we have to understand that when it has to do with kingdom advance it is territorial god so designed that frontiering the kingdom from the earth standpoint is territorial that means god moves per territory he's not doing the same thing everywhere at the same time when he gave the instruction for world evangelization in acts chapter 1 and verse 8 he said it will start from jerusalem to judea to samaria then the uttermost part of the earth hallelujah and the bible names believers now they are theologically believers are classified in two dimensions number one our classification based on our identification that means the bible classifies believers based on our identification with christ so we have names like joint heirs we have um, names like the branches and the vine all of those names are attempts to show our oneness it attempts to help us understand our identification and then believers are also classified according to function and assignment now he uses expressions like kings priests ambassadors light and salt this is one of such times when jesus was calling us light and salt matthew chapter 5 we we'll begin our reading from verse 13. now jesus is teaching them the territorial dimension of kingdom advance ye are the salt of the earth he says but if the salt have lost its several wherewith shall it be salted it is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men we're reading to 16 14 says ye are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid and then verse 15 says neither do men light a candle take note now and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick and it giveth light not to you to all that are in the house 
the effect of that light is felt within that space then he says let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven philippians chapter 2 from verse 13 we'll read down to 16 philippians chapter 2 from verse 13 For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. 14. It says, do all things without murmuring or disputing. My verse of emphasis is now 15 and 16. It says that ye may be blameless and harmless sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. He said, among whom ye shine as light in the world hallelujah among whom ye shine as light in the world holding forth the word of light that i may rejoice and so on and so forth so he lets us know that in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation he mandates us to shine as light write this if you care please from a standpoint of revival our mandate is to keep god and his purposes alive across our territories from a standpoint of revival our corporate mandate as a people is to keep god and his purposes alive within a territory what i mean by keeping god means god consciousness you may want to add that we have a responsibility from a standpoint of revival to keep god consciousness alongside the purposes of god alive across our assigned territories that means it should never be that a believer is present within a territory and then god consciousness dies within that territory and god struggles to penetrate that territory it should not be from a standpoint of revival we have a corporate mandate to do whatever it takes under god to see that the purposes of god are both ignited and preserved within our assigned territories are we together i'll share with us six keys very quickly like i said in the morning by the privilege of god's grace i am and i remain a student of revival i have invested my life studying the moves of god across continents across nations I have seen God do spectacular things in the lives of people. I have had the honor of gleaning from their wisdom as to what business they did with God that afforded them that opportunity to be mightily used by God. And I was able to piece through scripture and through the wisdom of this man six keys that I believe are responsible for igniting and even preserving territorial revivals it is impossible for a territory to be barren of the move of god if these principles are kept can we discuss them a bit number one prayer straight up that is the first key that is responsible for igniting and even preserving territorial revivals prayer particularly the dimension of prayer that captures warfare and intercession like we discussed in the morning every city has gates every city has territorial spirits there are gatekeepers are not just men there are spirits assigned to territories their assignment is to fight everything god men systems and structures and in order of priority these spirits do not look for everyone they will come to everyone but their assignment is those who matter as far as the program of god is concerned they have a singular assignment to thwart everything that is pro kingdom within that territory you will find in scripture that the man we call the madman in gadara that man had the mandate of becoming the evangelist who will save 10 cities so satan seeing that destiny carefully cherry picked that man and bound him in one place when jesus set that man free he single-handedly was responsible for the salvation of a decapolis i told us in the morning satan will seldom attack 
people randomly. He would, he would attack people based on his awareness uh, to the degree to which they align to God's purposes. That is the degree to which they attract his interest. When the devil, I told you that the devil has no preset agenda. He, 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 his agenda depends on what God is doing with you. So he has to wait on God also to know what to do with you. When he finds out that God is investing his time, his jealousy, his presence, you become an object of interest automatically. Prayer is very important. There is no territory that will thrive and be able to ignite and even sustain genuine revival fire if we do not preserve the ministry of prayer. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. When it was time for, when Satan was threatened by the prayer ministry of Daniel, Satan went as far as using the parliament to stop prayers for 30 days. You would think something that was weightier would be discussed in the parliament. How would you gather intelligent legislatures only to talk about prayer and say by the decree of the king only 30 days. Don't pray. Afterwards you can get back. Because one man's prayer was prohibiting the activity of darkness within that territory. Are we together? Jesus himself said men ought always to pray and not to faint. Let me tell you sincerely, especially for the times that we live in, believers must be alive to prayer, strategic prayer with intelligence and understanding. Hallelujah. Pastors must pray. The Bible says watch and pray. Not just watch and discuss. You watch and then you pray. Number two. In fact, let me just read for you i wrote two scriptures let me do justice to those scriptures ezekiel 22 let's start our reading from verse 23 ezekiel 22 still on prayer and the word of the lord came unto me saying son of man say unto her thou art the land that is not cleansed nor reigned upon in the day of indignation it says there is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof like a roaring lion ravening the prey they have devoured souls they have taken the treasure and precious things they have made her many widows in the midst thereof 26 it says her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things they have put no difference between holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. They have hid their eyes from my Sabbath and I am profaned among them. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls to get dishonest gain. Now look at the condition of this territory. And her prophets have doubted them with untampered mortar, seeing vanity and divining lies unto them, saying, Thus saith the Lord God when the Lord has not spoken. 29. The people of the land have used oppression and have exercised robbery. They have vexed the poor and the needy. Yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. The Bible says, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. Tragedy. But I found none. As a result, I have poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their head, saith the Lord. There must be men and women positioned to engage the realm of the spirit and to compel men, systems and structures to align to the purposes of God. Are we together? This is very, very important. Even Jesus, for him to safely arrive to the earth, it took the ministry of Anna the prophetess. Do you know there were three people that Jesus met and all of them were people given to prayer. Simon of Cyrene, Anna the prophetess, and John 
the prophet who we call the Baptist. These were the three prophets that played key roles in the life of Jesus. And every one of them was given to prayer. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Isaiah 62. Isaiah 62. Very popular scripture. Isaiah chapter 62. We we'll begin our reading from verse 1. It says, For Zion's sake I will not hold my peace. For Jerusalem's sake I will not rest. Until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. Verse 2. It says, And the Gentiles shall see your righteousness and the kings thy glory. Thou shalt be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord shall name. Verse 3. It says, Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. We are reading to 7, verse 4 now. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land no more be termed desolate. But thou shalt be called Hephzibah, and thy land Beulah. For the Lord delighted in thee, and thy land shall be married. That means it will be productive. Verse 5. For as a young man married a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. And then he says, I have set to this effect. To be able to achieve this that I have set, I have set watchmen upon your walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day or night, ye that make mention of the Lord. He said, keep not silence. The last verse. And give him no rest till he establish until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. So you would just see Jerusalem become a praise and not know that behind it there were men pushing in the spirit. He said, I desire to make Jerusalem the praise of the earth, but watchmen, you must pray. I pray that someone will obtain the grace to take your prayer life serious. In the name of Jesus Christ. Prayer is not for men of God, prayer is for men. Provided you are a man, the Bible mandates that you pray. Key number two. The second key that is responsible for igniting and even preserving territorial revivals, I wrote here, is the regular convergence of believers within that territory. The regular convergence of believers within that territory to be trained, equipped, and empowered the regular convergence of believers within that territory to be trained to be equipped and to be empowered this is the model that we see in the book of acts acts chapter 2 please we begin from 42 the regular convergence of believers within that territory to be trained equipped and empowered I submit to you that any territory that does not have platforms where believers can converge for the purpose of training, doctrine, and growth, that territory will never be able to ignite sustainable revival and it will not even be able to preserve it. Acts 2 and verse 42. The Bible says they continued steadfastly. The key word continued. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers next verse and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles we're reading to 47 the bible says and all that were believed were added together and had all things in common and the bible says they sold their possessions and their goods and parted them to all men and, and you know as every man had need 46 it says and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart as a result 47 the bible says they praised god and they had favor with all the people and the lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. There is a serious problem with any territory that does not have living churches 
and leading apostolic and prophetic platforms that make for the growth and the maturity of the believers. You may have heard me say this, that the greatest need of an unsaved person is salvation. An encounter with Jesus, the Son of the living God. No matter what you give an unbeliever, if it does not translate to saving his soul, you did not really bless him. Give him an estate. Give him a house. Give him an opportunity to be educated. Those things are valuable. But in order of divine priority, the greatest need of a non-believer is an encounter with Jesus, the Son of the living God. The greatest need of a believer who is just saved is transformation. And that comes through the sound communication of doctrine. The word doctrine comes from the Latin word doctrina. It means a communication of a preset body of truth that turns a student to become something exact. Believers must learn doctrine. This is what brings stature and maturity to believers. Can I tell you, when a territory has believers but who are children, there is still problem in that territory. Because an heir, as long as he's a child, he differeth not from a slave, even though he be lord of all. You, sh you can random pick believers across a territory and test their spiritual understanding. What do they know about prayer? What do they know about the word of God? What do they know about warfare? What do they know about increase? That can be a fair assessment of the quality of the spiritual platforms within that territory. It is my considered opinion that any believer that is at least five years old in any assembly, if that person cannot defend his faith and his spiritual understanding, that there is a serious problem with that believer. Are we together? Yes. I commend you to God, he says, and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. The maturity of a territory depends on the spiritual maturity of the believers therein. Are we together? It is for this reason that men of God are given. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15. And I will give you shepherds or pastors according to my heart. The Bible says they have a singular assignment to feed you. Meaning they expect you to grow. To feed you with knowledge and with understanding. If you want to ignite and preserve territorial revivals. We must pray that nothing stops the regular convergence of believers for the purpose of training, for the purpose of maturity, and for the purpose of empowerment. Number three, very quickly. The third key that is responsible for igniting and also preserving territorial revivals is an open display of the power of God. Parakatoskiata. An open display of the power of God within that territory. Visible manifestations of miracles, signs and wonders. Can I tell you, a territory that does not see the power of God at work will soon forget God. God uses the display of his power to remind men that he is still there. We need to see the power of God move consistently across our territories. In Acts chapter 4, let's start from verse 12 for sake of time. Acts chapter 4, the Bible tells us um, that Peter went to pray at Gate Beautiful and now seeing this man who had been there, you know, crippled, he prayed for him and then the man began to walk and the news went round town and they called them so this was a summon as a result of that miracle he said he's speaking now neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved next verse 13 now when they saw the boldness of peter and john and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Verse 14. And beholding the man which was healed, standing with them. I like this. 
beholding the man who was healed, beholding the testimony standing with you. This is a more powerful way of preaching. You preach with the evidence standing with you. Beholding the man which was healed standing with them. He said they could say nothing against it. When you declare the Lordship of Christ, it's easy for people to contend, but not when your evidence is standing with you. Are we together? Verse 15. But when they had committed themselves to go inside of the council, they conferred among themselves. Next verse. Saying, what shall we do to this man? For that indeed a notable miracle had been done by them. It is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it. May that be someone's testimony. Like Pastor Nat sang here. That God will do something in your life. That unbelievers will be the ones carrying the testimony. They said we don't believe in this God. But he's done something to this man. The gospel that we preach is the gospel of power. And we must not allow our weaknesses and ignorance to extract away the power dimension of the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, he said, for it is the power of God. I believe in the power of God. I believe in miracles. I believe in signs and wonders. When Pastor Nat was just ministering, you can imagine how the atmosphere just changed, just with one testimony. Something that happened. Let me tell you this. One genuine testimony. I, I, I was doing a series with our people and I, I began to teach them that God did not intend that preachers would be only men. Testimonies and miracles are also preachers. There is a sermon that the third three is waiting for and it is not humans that will preach it. Your miracles are also evangelists. There is a kind of sermon that only your results can preach. Your territory is waiting for testimonies. An attestation of the mighty hand, the workings of God. Please do not downplay the place of the power of God. It is very important. Let me tell you this. Why, why do we need our territories to experience the power of God? Number one, it creates conviction. When we see the display of the manifest hand and power of God, it compels everyone to know that there is a God that sits in heaven. Miracles, signs and wonders create conviction. In Acts chapter 19, we begin our reading from verse 11 for time. Acts chapter 19 and verse 11. Please write it down. Igniting and preserving territorial revivals. Point three now. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Joshua Selman. Amen and amen. I receive it from the depth of my heart. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them now this is evangelism are we together in fact just leave verse 12 we may not have the time to stretch it down to 17 that you preach with evidence the goodness and the message of god I have found out that in the presence of overwhelming evidence, you do not need to do too much talking. When Moses stood before Pharaoh, he spoke and the rod continued the speaking. He threw the rod and he said, let the rod continue the preaching. He was preaching and the signs were preaching. Where Moses became exhausted, the signs continued. And Pharaoh had the salmon of those signs till he let God's people go. In the name of Jesus, I'm speaking to someone that as a result of this conference, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, may God do something in your life that you will keep testifying for the remaining part of this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. When you read through the Bible, the Bible does not hide 
the manifestation of miracles from Genesis to Revelation. The Bible in fact is so meticulous and sometimes the Bible can annoyingly give details about miracles. And you are wondering why does God have to be this meticulous? Just say the Red Sea parted. Why give us the details? So that you will know that miracles are messengers. They preach and the territory can hear them. Hallelujah. When God called me to ministry, I prayed and I cried to God. I said, Lord, please do not send me with just a sermon. Let there be the backing of the Spirit, genuine and evidence of your power. Let me tell you, you can compel a territory in one day if their eyes can see. Christianity, the Christian faith, was never designed to just be heard alone. We both hear and see. If your Christianity just makes men hear alone, you are not complete. They should hear and see. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8 from verse 5. And Philip went down to the city of Samaria. And the Bible says he preached Christ unto them. Verse 6. Let's read together. One to read. And the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spake. Uh -huh. Hearing and seeing the miracles. Please go back to verse 6. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. You know, for as long as we keep saying God can do this. God can lift. God will bless. God can change stories. People will get tired of saying amen one day. Are we together? I have seen what happens to people at the presence of genuine notable miracles. When there is the manifested power of God, it brings convictions. You see that even the most hardened people are broken in the presence of God. An open display of the power of God. When Elijah got tired of the rubbish that was happening in his day, he did not propose a discussion with the king. He said, you know what? Let's go to Carmel. It's as simple as that. This, this, how long shall you stay and be in a straight betwixt? If God be God, serve him. If Baal be God, serve him. He said, now let us have a contest. The God that answers by fire, let him be God. I like that. And he said, I will give you a chance. Call upon your God. Bring in all your skill and I will wait. And the Bible says they started from morning. Now you go and read the various skills they employed to call down fire. The last of it was that they began to lacerate and cut themselves. Oh, bell, hear us. And Elijah said, shout louder. Maybe he's sleeping. And then the Bible says, when it was time for the evening sacrifice, Elijah was not a fool. He understood the laws of the Spirit. When it was the time for the evening sacrifice, he said, get out of my way now. I've given you a chance. He put the wood together, poured water upon it, and called upon the God of heaven. Ah! From the rising of the sun, to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. Adonai. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. For some of you, by reason of this thing, God wants to do something in your life that brings an end to idolatry in your family once and for all. This issue of some people worshipping God and others is because nobody has risen in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Can I tell you, let me challenge ministers of the gospel. Let's not sit back and allow divination to permeate the church and destroy the church as though God were dead. There needs to be an emergence of men of fire and power, genuine miracles, here and now. Shout 
Kamakata baraka poska di barangusia. One genuine testimony that a madman lives around the street of a church and while worship is going on, fire from the altar goes to arrest that man and he returns with his sound mind. One person who comes into church carrying courses like luggages on his head and with one encounter by the spirit by the next month he returns back dressed in royalty and you tell him what happened and he says I met a God who does not just speak <laughs> believe me let me tell you this for as long as we do not allow God to pass through us and demonstrate the all-surpassing power of this kingdom that we so talk about, darkness will continue to rise, reinvent itself, eat up our children, eat up the fabric of society. To the point that in many territories, they see the church as a nuisance to civilization. When they want to do anything serious, they bring the church out. They say, no, 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 you we should not come here. When we are ready to pray, we come. But when we are deciding matters, you go and read your Bible. Elisha said, let no man come. So that you will know that there is a prophet in Israel. Do you know, I was sharing again with our people, and I'm sure ministers of the gospel here will know, there is a sudden reemergence of idolatry in Nigeria. There is a sudden re revisiting. Even people who did not have any, you see all these boys that are doing ritual, what they call it now. Let's not just keep quiet and say, don't make the mistake of Esther. Mordecai said, don't think because you are safe in the palace. You don't do anything about what is happening outside the palace. When you allow evil to continue, the devil brings plan B and plan C and adds to it. But someone in the name of Jesus shout no way. Shout it again. Say no way. It is my prayer that every Sunday and every other day, it does not matter where Satan visits, the experience will be the same. Fire from this cathedral before he lands there, another one is lifting him somewhere. Let it not look like preachers are just wasting their time on members. You preach and cry and pray after 10 years, and in one day, a herbalist calls someone and he will ignore all your sermons and series because they are looking for results. Can I tell you, do not downplay how far people can go when they really need results. They can come and tell lies and say it happened because you pray for me. But even you, you will know you are not connected to that miracle. I hope you like what I'm saying. The power of God. We have no right to tell people, don't go to Havalis. Don't go to this. When for 50 years, the person can bring the evidence that followed his serving Satan. I served Satan for 50 years. And they, are, they maintained the madness of my son. They did this one and that one. Now we are proposing to them the reality of a superior kingdom. And they are asking a question we must answer. Where is the proof of the superiority of this kingdom? I sincerely believe in the power of God. I do. I do. This is more than falling down. This is, we are not talking of falling down and standing up. The power to change systems. To shift the climate of systems. Mm. An open display of the power of God. That when people are in trouble, they begin to rejoice when they see a church signboard because they know that they have finally found refuge. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun. Your name is to be hallowed. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun. If we 
But to be honest with ourselves, every family represented in Africa and represented here, there must be somewhere in your family, nuclear or extended, where Satan is trying to take advantage of the absence of the power of God. This is an assignment upon you to go back and say, Hey, hey, we are not revisiting those altars again. Can I tell you, when people become desperate to see results and we keep giving them explanations, a time will come, they will put us in a category and know that they cannot have results and get up and go to all kinds of demonic things and Satan is more than ready to welcome them. This is a charge to not, this is not just to ministers of the gospel. Every believer, you must pray and say, Lord, let something from heaven come upon me genuinely. It is almost a shameful thing to actually believe that miracles can be stage managed. Why fake what can be real? An open display. It is my prayer that for everyone who has come, that between now and March, may God do something that you will know is a signature He signed upon your life. That it will be impossible for anyone to hear it and just sweep it under the carpet and casualize that miracle. May it happen for you in the name of Jesus. Please sit down. An open display. Of the power of God. Are you ready for number four? I'm just touching them. Number one, prayer. Number two, regular convergence of believers for the purpose of training, maturity. Number three, an open display of the power of God. Supernatural manifestations of His power over the lives of God's people. Are you ready for number four? How do we ignite and how do we preserve territorial revivals? The intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers to ensure continuity. The intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers to ensure continuity. The intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers to ensure continuity. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. The intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers to ensure continuity. Second Timothy 2 and verse 2. This is the fourth key that is responsible for igniting and preserving revivals. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses he said the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also can i tell you the moment there is a generation that does not receive that button the devil has he, you, the generation can, it does not matter who did well before that time intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers to ensure continuity no man should leave the earth without reproducing at least twice of you you know there have been territories where you will have seasons of seasoned veterans of the gospel men and women of god who are with power but sometimes they make mistakes and we see this even with the God's generals, respectfully speaking. That many of them were focused at giving and pouring and maximizing their destinies. And they forgot that one day they would not be there. Or one day they would not have that strength. And the devil knowing that they had already neglected the generations coming. He now allowed them knowing that time will naturally fade them away. And then the people who should now carry the batons, Satan went and grew with them patiently. So that by the time you turn back now, you can see someone, respectfully speaking, whose father was a foremost evangelist. And you are wondering, 
Where is the mantle in that house? Because they made a mistake. Can I tell you, if you are doing anything great, don't just focus on the moment. You must focus on posterity. This is a mistake. And this does not just, this is beyond just ministry, like fivefold ministry. Even in business. is why in Africa we almost do not have third and fourth generation anything. People start things and it dies with them in their lifetime. You travel to the West and you can see, you can see businesses that are 200 years old. 300 years old. Because they understand the principle of continuity. My dearly revered mentor, Dr. Miles Mundo, one of the last books he wrote in his lifetime before he died was passing it on. The principle of legacy. You see, life operates like a clock, the hand of the clock. And when you are captured in the moment of your relevance, you can forget that one day, prepared or not, there will be need for continuity. Jesus, as mighty as he was, doing miracles and the rest, knew that he would not be there physically forever. And while he was doing that, he was also raising and building the disciples who would later be apostles. Forget those who betrayed him. Everybody will not betray you. There will always be someone faithful. If you can find Peter, James and John who are faithful, you are good enough. The intentional mentorship of younger believers this is why we see that our, the, the church today is plagued with all kinds of things, especially from younger ministers, because there is no intentional... You see, let me tell you, if you are not there to help someone rise, you can't come and meet them when they are risen and claim and want them to... They, 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 they will only answer to who was there when they were rising. Are we together now? You can't come and expect that people who have suffered and labored, whoever was with them and patient enough to believe in their future, their allegiance will be to those people. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? This is very important. You can look at the average young minister and you can see the gaps. No matter how sincere, you can see the gaps. Is the reason why, respectfully speaking, we can have younger ministers who can talk about fathers, insult anybody, because nobody showed them the long-term consequence of those kinds of things. All in the name of speaking your mind. You see all these ordinances in the spirit, people keep breaking. And the trouble is that except the mercy of God intercepts, there is casualty that is waiting for them. And the danger is they will suffer it alone. Is someone learning? You want to ignite territorial revival? You want to preserve it? We must trust God for grace. Don't look at children and say they are small. When will they come? How were you before? Every troublemaker today was a child yesterday. Can I tell you this? Every national problem was first a regional problem that was not managed. Every regional problem was a community problem that was not managed. Community problems are family problems. It, it started from the neglect of someone somewhere. And then it started growing. Every armed robber came from a house. I hope we are still together. Philippians 4 and verse 9. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 9. intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers to ensure continuity. Can we have it? Okay, let me just pull it up from here. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 9. Here's what it says. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me. It says, do and the God of peace shall be with you. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do and the God of peace shall be with you. Every great leader and everyone who God has given an opportunity 
to rise to any elevated position, whether in ministry, whether in business, we have a responsibility by God to see to it that as much as possible, those committed to us are genuinely mentored and that they become people of stature and balance, not lacking in anything. Can I tell you, no matter how we travel around preaching the gospel and blessing people, it is the way you build your home that you will be rated. I learned this, you know, I would look at our fathers and find out that no matter where they travel, they make sure they are around building their people. Until I had the privilege of talking with one of our fathers and I asked him, what is the secret behind this? And he opened my eyes to it. You can go and preach in a crusade three days and finish and leave them and never see the person you preach to again. But the one who is with you here, if you do not build them, you can be a global success and you can be a failure within your assigned place. Let me give you an example. If I give you an assignment and the assignment is to pick this tray, this tray and take it to God's servant, the man of God, and you come up here and sweep this place and worship and roll on the ground and even change this pulpit and you don't pick this, the reward that is kept for you is written reward for taking this. Would it be said you have done well? You did not do evil, but you did not do well all the same. So, while we seek to be global, as wonderful as it is, we must understand by divine rating, Jesus had to give account of those that were connected to him in John 17. He had to give, he said, all that you have given me, I have kept and none is lost. He had to explain why Judas was not part of them. Except the son of perdition, and it was not my incompetence, is so that scripture will be fulfilled. Are we together? Intentional mentorship of younger believers. I was saying it in the morning. Um, <laughs> a gentleman met me some weeks ago, I think. And he came with a large poster, joined the prayer line. And, you know, I was sweating already, tired, hoping to finish so that I will go home. And here is a gentleman standing with a big poster. And I thought it was a prayer request. As soon as I opened it, I saw his face for president. Of, of Nigeria. Now, I didn't know what to, I said. What, what in the world? How do you now? For, and look, I'm not looking down. God can use anybody, but please, we know God. I'm not talking of a visionary young man. You, you can, you, you just, it's not, it's difficult to say these kinds of things because it looks like you are looking down on them. But I looked at him and he was with the poster, large poster. And I was lovingly trying to help him. And you see, God does not leave people. There are line upon line and he was determined. I know the problem of that boy. The problem is who raised him. There was something they did not teach him about the law process. The consequence of it is that conviction. Many years ago in Zaria, a gentleman came and met me. He was wearing a regalia. I finished and I saw a group of people and he stood there and they said they came for impartation and release. I said, where are you coming from? They said, we are coming from Kano. True story. I said, who are you? He said, I am Jesus. I looked again. I thought he was just claiming I am one with Christ. I mean it. Jokes apart. There was a gentleman who stood near him who said he was John. And No, true story. I could see the zeal and the sincerity. They now came to me and they said, by revelation, whatever voice spoke to them and said, I am John, so like I released Jesus, they now came. I could see the sincerity. This is not a wicked boy. There is danger when you allow believers to freelance their understanding about God. Growth is methodical. When people freelance their spiritual understanding, there will be gaps. And provided their hearts are open to close the gaps, that is fine. But most times that gap is garnished with pride. And you will now not find room to be able to help and close those gaps. Intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers to ensure continuity. A man of God once called me and said, every time he's preaching, a gentleman will just get up and disturb the service with prophecy. I said, send him out of your church. What does that mean? He said, no, no, I don't want it. I said, this is not insecurity. 
No, you have a spiritual responsibility to guide the understanding of your people. There are things when, we, when you permit their unwritten, you, you have given access to superior versions of those things. Are we together? If someone is staying under your roof, he should serve your God. If he's coming for weekend, that's all right. But if you will stay beyond a certain place, if you don't believe the God that gave me that room, leave my house. It took a lot to bring that presence there. Hmm. Again, church is quiet. When we say mentoring people, I'm sorry to say this and please don't feel offended. There are many parents who only give birth and stop there. It is sin to just give birth to children and add, keep adding problems to societies. Are we together? People just give birth and give birth and allow those children. They are not home two, three days. Nobody cares. They return after the fifth day. You are back. You are welcome. Your food is in the kitchen. They disappear again for two weeks. Can I tell you, anybody who is a parent, that thing that happened at the point of marriage is not just joining two people. A grace came on you to be able to raise your family. You can take advantage of that grace. That is the truth. There is trouble for any system that does not have a structure for continuity. We have seen ministers, we have seen business people, we have seen captains of industry. Something just impedes or incapacitates their ability for efficiency and there is nobody they can trust again. A man of God can be locked up maybe somewhere and not able to come to church and literally he cannot find any other sound person within his circle and he can say, stand for me. Your name is to be hallowed. Ah. One of the reasons why we say Jesus was so successful is because of us. That he could train us and trust us so much. And trust that the church will get the job done. Don't focus on your success alone. You must trust God for grace to raise and reproduce your kind as much as possible. Number five. The third key that ignites and preserves revivals across territories is influence. Hmm. God's people must rise to prominence so as to preserve the interest of the kingdom. Influence. Influence. This is sadly a, a part that has been neglected in the body of Christ. We believe in evangelism and growth and then someone just sits in the position of power and rubbishes all our prayer and fasting with one policy. Influence is very powerful. Influence that God's people must rise to prominence so as to preserve the interest of the kingdom. Acts chapter 18 from verse 9 and 10. If there's any one of you here who is fighting or rejecting influence, I announce to you with every sense of love it is an attack. Don't reject influence. It takes evangelism and influence to enthrone Christ across the hearts of men and across territories. Acts 18, 9 and 10. Please look at this. Then spake the Lord unto Paul in the night, in the night by vision, Be not afraid, he said, but speak and hold not thy peace. Why? 11, 10. For I am with thee. And no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. What is the advantage? For I have much people in this city. I have much people in this city. There is a spirit that tries to bring an aberrated concept of holiness. To mean you should ignore anything that elevates you to a position of notoriety in an attempt to show that you are serious with God. That may not be an accurate communication of the truth. I can tell you influence is powerful and influence is necessary. It's necessary for a preacher. It's necessary for an individual. The more you raise and have people of influence, the more the purposes of God given to you can be defended, especially in the wicked world that we live today. 
Someone can buy a land and another person can come just knowing that a church will be built there can come and bully people away from the purposes of God. I believe in influence. I made up my mind as a man of God that by the privilege of God's grace, I will never only raise a people who love Jesus as far as their spiritual commitment is alone. I believe in influence. That God will grant me grace to raise strategic people. Are we together? Strategic people. People of influence. A man of God wants to travel for a program, they just cancel the visa and refuse. And you are wondering, what? Are you a thief? <laughs> to step into the nation, they harass you there again, and you, you face a plethora of embarrassment simply because of the. What is. Influence can manage many things, I'm telling you. Influence can create efficiency. It can, influence can work in partnership with the Holy Ghost to give you peace. Especially in a wicked world like this. There are many prayers you will not need to pray. Influence can answer them. I hope you believe what I'm saying. There are families that do not have anyone that God has risen. Whatever Satan wants to do with them, it just takes mercy. I believe in influence. And in the name of Jesus for everyone who has come here, may it please the King... Pastor Nat said something very powerful the first song he was going to raise. He said that he's found out that the more he lifts Jesus Christ and allows him to be glorified, the more he gives him an opportunity. I said, that's it. He got it. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. That one day you will be sitting down and someone will call you. That is the prayer request of many people. They will say, I want to see you. And you will think they are scammers. You say, I really want to see you. God has sent me to come to you. Can I tell you this? There are gatekeepers across every system. And when you can capture gatekeepers for Jesus, you have captured the territories. It is true. Do not reject influence. It is powerful. It is an effective tool for igniting and preserving revivals. Let me give us the last and then we'll pray. Are you ready for the sixth now? An open display of love by the church. An open display of love by the church. The sixth way we ignite revival and preserve it is by an open display of love to the church by the church love beyond cultural biases love beyond religious biases matthew chapter 5 and verse 45 it is important that we demonstrate the love of jesus it says that ye might be children of your father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on both the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. I remember there was a year we did something in Zaria after there was, there was a crisis that happened within that period. And we decided to do a peace concert and then we set up something and invited all the people whether you're a christian or not just come it was a free medical outreach i was shocked and humbled almost in tears when i saw the amount of unbelievers women coming with their hijabs they would they now had a legitimate ground to enter the church they always wanted to but there seemed to be an unwritten thing saying stay out there now love is a language all men understand you don't need to be educated to understand love. Love is a language everyone understands. And you could see the people crying, bringing their children, and I said, oh dear. An open display of love. With no prejudices, with no whatever it is. We can't do everything, but we can do something. I'm telling you the truth, there is evangelism that happens by love. There is a way you can wrap the gospel, wrap it so much and serve it with love. 
In fact, the Bible says love is the more excellent way of doing anything. Preaching by love is better than preaching. Singing with love is better than singing. Ministering the power of God with love is better than just ministering. I show you the more excellent way. Hallelujah. For most of us, we score well on all the five points except love. The moment someone comes and is not a Christian, you almost kill the person and then if he says, no, 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 it's just my name that is implicating me, I'm a child of God, you suddenly change hypocritically and say, oh really, you are welcome. And the person says, no, I've seen what I needed to see. You are not a Christian. Times, can I tell you, there are many people today who need to come to the fold. They may not listen to your gospel, but try love and see the wonder working power of love. Everybody cannot do everything, but everybody can do something. That from where you are, you can do something. These six keys I have learned are the keys that control the ignition and the preservation of territorial revivals. It is impossible for a territory that submits to these principles to remain barren of anything God. You know, it, it, is almost, it is almost like a norm that when the move of God comes, it just dies down and fades away. It fades away because the principles of its preservation have not been taught. The move of God can remain, for instance, heaven. For instance, heaven. There's never been a time in heaven when the purposes of God and God himself and Jesus' his son is not the central focus. Satan tried to bring all kinds of things and he was judged. If heaven can be that way, we can cross every territory and make it to be in the earth as it is in heaven. It's a painful thing for people to be in their old age, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s and they look back and they see to they look at several parts of, of the world today places that were centers of revival some of them they've destroyed every monument everything god and they built all kinds of things may it never be that one day we'll turn back and say we used to serve god we used to pray here abuja used to be a place where jesus was glorified uh -uh. What is my assignment tonight? To stand in partnership with the grace upon the man of God having discussed the subject of restoration personal revival in the morning and now territorial revival. My assignment is to lead us to pray and to help us experience the life and the power of Jesus genuinely even if it is for one person to experience the reality of this Jesus so that you know that he's not a theoretical Jesus that you can be revived and refired tonight and you can leave this place knowing that the things that I have believed are not cunningly devised fables but they are truth hallelujah I became tired of church I became tired of religion very sincere people but I would listen to preachers preach and I would watch people oppressed sick downcast dejected and they would so vocally talk about a Jesus who could change things and in my innocence I would sit down and say God are you this difficult to reach your people there's something wrong. The propositions that are given about you, it, it tells that you are a benevolent God. You are loving. You, can, you are apt to reach down to people. But what is responsible for that distance? It led me to that pursuit. Days became weeks. Weeks became months. And I said, Lord, I'm not looking to be a preacher. All I want is your presence and answers to this. I do not want to stand before people and not be able to give them an explanation as to why they are unable to see your power and i said lord whatever it will take please work on me i'm not in a hurry to move build me well 
so that I can do my best with the gift of this life you have given me to represent you so thoroughly. This has been my call and I'm inviting you to stop nominal Christianity, average, careless, powerless Christianity that cannot bring glory to the name of the Lord and contend for something genuine. There's going to be a great awakening. There's going to be a great revival in our land. There's going to be a great awakening. And everyone who calls on Jesus, they will be saved. There are still territories that are unreached. And they have been so frustrated, they hate anything Christianity. We need to bring the gospel of power once again. To tell them Jesus saves. Jesus heals. Jesus delivers. There are many people who have tried this Jesus thing for want of words. And many of them are packing up a lot of things. After the pandemic... Many people were not Christians again. They just said, you know what? I've been looking for a chance to hate Jesus officially. And now this pandemic gave me an opportunity. And with flimsy excuses, they justified their refusing the things of God. You try to talk to people about Jesus. Oh, their lives are full of bitter and painful stories. And they credit their pain to Jesus. Where was he when my loved one died? Where was he when my, my certificate has been lying like a piece of paper for decades? I have prayed and cried for a job. I have watched unbelievers use divination to get jobs and promotions. Let me announce to you that Jesus is alive. Let me announce to you that Jesus is is still exalted. Ah, he is exalted. The king is exalted. On high. I will praise him. He is exalted forever. Exalted, and I will praise his name. He is the Lord. Forever his truth shall be heaven and earth. Rejoice in your holy name. He's exalted, my king is exalted. He said, Awake, thou that sleepest, and Christ will give you life. Let me speak to someone. That was why I started with the subject that we started with yesterday. Can I tell you, don't get used to pain. Jesus is still alive. Don't get used to failure. Don't get used to poverty. Don't get used to defeat. It is true that Jesus died. But for how long? He only died for three days. And he resurrected in glory triumphed over death shot the mouth of Hades can I tell you this we serve a living God I know that the world today looks like is Jesus there there are all kinds of things but let me tell you sincerely the one who sits upon the throne is not scratching his head wondering what to do he is almighty now unto the Lamb upon the throne We raise a sound We raise a Please rise up with me For He is God and God alone Hallelujah Hallelujah Now unto the world Upon the throne, we raise a sound. We raise a sound over the nations of the earth. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! 
our God and God alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have an assignment to stop the nations from thinking Jesus is dead. We have an assignment to stop the nations from thinking that this faith walk is a powerless one. And I want someone and anyone to join me in this campaign that we must let the nations know that he is alive. We have the singular assignment of re-presenting Jesus. He's been misunderstood. We have to reintroduce him. I'm going to pray for you have just a few minutes and for many of us you have come here tonight and you have come with burdens you have come with yokes you have come with all kinds of pain it will be injustice to this message on revival if we just round up and share the grace and let you go back like that without giving his majesty an opportunity for a triumphant entry in and through your life and your destiny but please allow me to make a call and to reintroduce this Jesus perhaps there's someone here in this place tonight you came here without a definition for your life frustrated and you're saying apostles I've been hearing this thing about Jesus and I'm honestly not interested give your destiny a chance tonight and there are others who are saying, Apostle, I love Jesus, but as it is, my life has gone haywire. I truly need to rededicate my life. Before I do the general prayer, I just want to take a minute or two. I truly believe that there must be someone in this meeting. There must be someone following from across the globe. And you are saying, Apostle, if you will give me a chance tonight, I need Jesus. I need him as a matter of life and death. There's nothing to be ashamed of. I'll count five and I want you to leave your seat and please come and stand here. Don't wait for someone to come before you come. You know that you need him sincerely. Win that war of destiny and come. I'll begin my counting now. One. Let's celebrate them as they come. Someone is coming. If you're coming, please rush. Please can you stand, madam, or dear? When they come, they should just stand for space. You don't have to kneel, my friend. Please stand. Celebrate them. They are coming. Come. Come to Jesus. Apostle, I don't know if I'm saved or not. Come. You join them. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may lead, I will fall. I have made a choice that I will listen for your voice wherever you may be. Listen, I believe that you are doing this with understanding and with intention. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Some of you are crying. You are standing before Jesus, the one who loves you gave himself for you. He is able to give us a new beginning. This is true revival. When we make him the epicenter of our lives and our destinies, then we are ready for a life of beauty, a life of color, and a life of grace. It's my joy and my honor to lead you to this Jesus, not another one. The same Jesus who died, exalted today as Lord and Christ. Please may I request that you lift your right hand if you can, high above your head, and I'd like you to say this convincingly, you are not reciting a poem. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive eternal life into my spirit i receive the abundance of grace even the gift of righteousness and i declare 
that you are my savior you are my lord and you are my king the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life i am the child of god i go forward ever and backward never amen let me pray for you thank you father for these ones they have come making this decision and the bible declares that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven i commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the holy spirit that you'll be grounded and established in righteousness and i declare that from tonight you go forward ever and backward never he gives you a new beginning welcome to the family of faith in jesus name i pray now please i just want you to move to my right my left which is your right let's celebrate them as they go to meet the counselors hallelujah now we're going to do this i have just about 10 minutes i don't intend to take your time please may i request pastor nat can i please request that you come and join me in this miracle service hallelujah we need this trumpet in this that will happen here right now hallelujah we're going to pray everything that does not name the name of jesus christ i want you to be ready to wave it goodbye and you must force him to wave you back in the name of jesus in one minute may i request just lift up your voice and begin to ask the lord to give you a visitation right about now go ahead right about now right about now Is someone lifting his hands? You deserve the glory and the honor. Father, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Father, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There's no one else like you.
hear me there is a reason why i ask please come pastor now there's a reason why i ask i usually would not want to embarrass him this way but i know that there is an anointing on this chauffeur and please hear me as he blows this trumpet this is what is going to begin to happen there is an anointing i'm seeing a separation please i want you to bring those people out as he begins to blast this trumpet for some of you there is a quickening a strong impartation of grace is a manifestation of the power of the spirit upon your inner man please let's have those people out and then at the same time as he's blowing that shofar please hear me god is going to be opening strange doors eight long doors that have been closed over people yes sir please bring those people under the anointing i tell you i just see fire just moving as well Bring them out. That mantle and that grace is coming on somebody. For a man of God, there is a new season. God is opening you up. Bring them out. There is a mantle that is coming upon you. For some of you, an activation of the prophetic. That prophetic man, Abakatosh Kapikata. Pregetosh Sendekete Lavaria. Please bring them out. Please bring them out. Hey. There's a release of the power of the Spirit coming upon your life. New season, new mantles, new mantles. Some of you have seen this in your dreams. You have seen this in your vision. Now the power of God is coming upon you. I ignite it. Let there be that activation upon your spirit man. Bring them out by the spirit of the living God. You'll never be the same tonight. By the blast of this trumpet, your spiritual ears are opening. For many of you, a miracle is happening to your hearing. Here, a miracle is happening to your hearing. Where are they? Parados Katedakatosiata. Every deafness that stops you from hearing the voice of the Spirit. Let it be open right now. Let it be open right now to hear the sounds of the Spirit. Praise God. Now hear me. Hear me. Truly God has put a grace upon this man. And I want to leverage on that grace and release an anointing upon prophetic worshippers. There are some of you who are just singers. You are not yet worshippers. You need to master the art and the protocol of the secret place. Help them. As he blasts this trumpet, I'm telling you there will be from, from, from the front to the back, the choir, many of you who are called into the ministry of prophetic psalmistry, there will be a breaking forth from within your spirit. The grace that brings tongues and sounds from the spirit. May that mantle rest upon you now. Take that grace now. May that mantle rest upon you now. The quickening of the spirit. I release you to the realm of prophetic chemistry. Songs from heaven. Songs from the throne. Songs from heaven. Songs from the throne. Ah, 
Kragata pakata prondos koto peleka toskati yata. Shafri desine katiya. I'm hearing in my spirit restoration that that which has left you that should not have gone. There is a mystery that is bringing it back to your life. Therefore, I prophesy: mantles lost, opportunities lost, relationships lost by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. May they begin to gravitate towards your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now hear me. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing. I'm seeing a coffin. And I'm seeing it dug inside the ground like a burial. But then mysteriously I'm seeing it come out again. And what was in it is coming out like a dead body. I know that this is a prophetic message that God is bringing resurrection. Giftings and mantles that have died. Dreams that have died. I'm about to pray for you. I'm seeing at least the number seven. At least seven people. This anointing is coming on you. That grace that brings and makes for resurrection. Therefore in the name of Jesus, everything that has died, we decree and declare by the Spirit. Talita Kumi. Let there be resurrection now. Help that woman, please. Talita Kumi. Let there be resurrection now. Every dead vision, every dead dream, every dead ministry, hear the word of the Lord. The same way Lazarus came forth, dreams come forth, visions come forth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Who is, is it victory or Victoria? I'm hearing vict, victory or Victoria. There's a name like that. I want to pray for the sick now, but just, just to talk to one or two people. Is there someone like that? Vic, is it victory or Victoria? Please make sure you... What's the name? Huh? Huh? Victoria. I want to pray for you. Please help this lady. She's under the strong influence of God's presence. I want to pray for her. This, my dear sister, listen to me. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old, for He's doing a new thing in your life in this season. I stretch my hands upon you and I pray in the name of Jesus. That anointing comes upon your life. Let it be a new season for you. In the name of Jesus. What do you do, ma'am? I'm seeing you counting money. Yes, sir. What do you do? I'm a banker. The Lord is going to lift you in a way that will surprise you. Please look at me, madam. I'm seeing problem in your office. I need to pray for you. If I don't pray for you, they will involve you in something that you have no business. And they will force you. They will share. I'm seeing them share money like money was missing. And they... they is that true? I know what you're talking about. You're, okay. So I'm, I want to pray for you that God will exempt you from this. I stretch my hands. Here at Reha I see. In the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God. May the grace that lifts, lift you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing someone with the name Joshua. I presume there might be a number of people there. But I'm seeing someone, the name Joshua. Joshua. Is there someone like that? I want to pray for you very quickly. The name Joshua. What do you do, sir? What do you do, sir? I'm a student. No. You're a student. I want to pray for you. Because what I see God doing in your life and your family will surprise you. Believe me when I tell you, you will handle wealth that will surprise you. This man, I don't know anything about you, sir. But you believe what I'm telling you? Yes, sir. I, I sense that there is a strange restoration of finances. Please believe me when I tell you this. People have lost monies in businesses. People have lost opportunities. Monies, financial opportunities that have gone. There is a hand that is calling it back. 
That's why we are lifting the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you in the name of Jesus, all the Joshua's who are here, by the power of the Holy Spirit. There's someone, your mother is in the hospital right now. We're about to pray for the sick. That would be the last thing we we'll do. But the Lord is showing me someone, your mom, biological mom, is in the hospital. And the Lord wants us to pray because I'm seeing the spirit of death. I, I'm not saying this to scare you. I'm just revealing what God is showing me. In the name of Jesus, I don't know who that person is, whether you are here or following online. By the mercies of the God of heaven, we extend and preserve her life. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, we shut the gates of the grave. And we declare the fullness of her days she will fulfill. For those of you who are out here in the name of Jesus, may the Lord help you. May the Lord show you mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Is there someone called Agnes? Agnes. Agnes. I'm hearing the name Agnes. If you're here, your name is Agnes. I want to pray for you. Because I'm seeing a door open. A door open. Agnes. Hallelujah. Please verify. This is are you sure? Someone help me. What's your name, madam? Where are you coming from? I'm from Manabra. I want to pray for you. I saw a door open. And the Lord is opening that door for you. Do you believe what I'm saying? Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus, let it be for you. There is a couple, I don't know if both, uh, uh, both of them are here, but I'm seeing three years. I know it doesn't look like um, so long a time, but you've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. The Lord wants to settle you now once and for all. Please, who is that? Is there, is there someone like that? Don't be ashamed. God is settling you once and for all on this issue right now. Agnes, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Who is that? I'll pray for you, but this is, this is not what the couple I'm seeing in my vision, but I'll still pray for you. In the name of Jesus, my dear, may the power of God touch you. In Jesus' name. Something is going to happen here now. Um, I, will always, I, don't, I honestly don't know why God does it. Every time he's releasing the grace for speed, people are going to start running by the Spirit. I just sense that anointing. Help them. I stretch my hands. I'm seeing that mantle is coming on people. And you will find out that you will start running by the Spirit. For many of you, you will be surprised. Ten years will come into one year. And God will grant you that speed. I stretch my hands at the count of three. In the name that is above all names. From the front to the back. I decree right now. May aparakatos katina kaparet. Please help them. So they don't enjoy themselves. My God, help this woman. Help that mother, please. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, receive speed to your destiny. Speed in ministry. Speed in business. Every delay, I stand by the voice of prophecy and I cast it over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray for you, sir. In the name of Jesus, I agree with you and I agree with your wife. According to the time of life and by the power that raised Christ from the dead, no matter what the medical condition is, and I use them as a point of contact for others, any, anyone here trusting God, whether for yourself or for your loved one, trusting God for the fruit of the womb, in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God, I decree and declare. Please bring the lady that shouts now loud under the anointing. I just saw fire just from the altar. There is a strong anointing. Please bring that lady. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord show you mercy, sir. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. In the name of Jesus. Let this be the end of this situation in the mighty and even the marvelous name of Jesus. Now we're going to pray for the sick. This is the real reason why I felt stirred in my heart as the Lord gave me that instruction to just ask the man of God to come. Thank you so much, sir. We're going to pray. Let me tell you this. I truly believe in the healing power of Jesus. I am a product of that healing power myself. I have been sick. 
I know what it means to be healed. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I declare that this power of witchcraft over your life, I curse it by the God of heaven. It must let you go in this atmosphere of glory. And hear me, if there is any foreign spirit gaining access to anyone's life, if there is anyone here under the sound of my voice that is under the influence of any strange spirit that is not the Christ at the count of three I want you to shout the name Jesus as you shout that name you wave that spirit goodbye forever are you ready now? One, two, three, shout Jesus. Be delivered now, once and for all, from every power, every other place, every spirit. This is Mount Zion, and upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and even holiness, and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. The name that is above every other name. Now hear me. Please lay your hands. You are trusting God for a miracle. Don't keep quiet if you know there is something the devil is using to afflict you. End it now once and for all. No matter what it is. Agree by faith. There is a sound that is coming. I tell you, I sense the power of God. I want to pray for the sick. Please lay your hands right now. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. Please believe in the healing power of Jesus. You are my hiding place. You always feel my heart. With songs of deliverance, Kabarata shalakata barata gati bete, sagata barat katos kodu brande gatele katos oto barata, brata katos sata brande skuti balakusia. Let the wind say I am strong. Now while the suffer comes, with it comes the healing anointing. Receive your healing now. My God, miracles are happening to people right now. High blood pressure, healed in the name of Jesus. Breast love, healed in the name of Jesus. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. My grave. All past be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. My great headache is being healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Every blood condition here, hear the word of the Lord. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Every troubling genotype we change now in the name of Jesus. Symptoms and traces of cancer, it dies now in the name of Jesus. Hepatitis, 
be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Blood conditions of all sorts. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. There's someone you are having severe chest pain. It doesn't matter whether you walk or not. And it's beginning to affect you. You are having breathing problems. If this is not COVID though. But it's affecting you. In the name of Jesus. The power of the Holy Ghost is touching you now. For someone the Lord is showing me. It started from a dream. You had a dream. And from that time. You have severe weakness in your body. You wake up from sleep. And it's as if you've not slept. Right now the life. And the power of Jesus. Is touching into your body now. There's someone having pile. Pile. In the name of Jesus. This just started. It's not, it's not, it's not really advanced. I pray for you right now. That devil of pile leaves your body now. There's a condition called gastritis. The Lord is healing someone from that condition right now. Please believe. Please believe. We are almost done. Believe. In the name of Jesus. There's someone, your, this is my left, your left ear. I don't know if it's that you have a problem with that left ear. I'm praying for you right now wherever you are. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. In the name of Jesus. Let there be a miracle for you now. I prayed for breast lung, but I'm still seeing that case again. In fact, for one, it is multiple lungs. It's not just one. Multiple lungs. I decree and declare every planting in your body that is not of the Christ, I command that it lets you go now. Someone, you're having severe pain with your vertebra. I don't know what just back severe back pain you almost cannot bend over like this in the name of jesus i'm praying for you right now the power of god is touching you there is there is a man in this place i'm not asking you to come out but you're not you're not you're not young you should be you should not be less than 55 i'm seeing you're already seeing symptoms of prostrate what they call enlarged prostrate this is affecting you but the power of the Holy Spirit is coming upon you right now. And I decree and declare, enlarge, prostrate, you are of the devil. Leave this body now. Leave this body now. Leave this body now. Whether the case is mentioned or not. In the name of Jesus. Hence you have come here. Return with an evidence of the power of God. Return with an evidence of the faithfulness of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone. Your hand. Your, like your shoulder area. I'm sensing severe pain. Around. In fact I'm feeling that pain right now. I decree and declare unto you. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. Let there be life and healing now. In the name of Jesus Christ. All of you who are here in front. I decree and declare. The impartations. The deliverances. The healings and everything you have received. They remain permanent with you. In Jesus name. Every door that has been shut over you before now. We declare over that door. This night, not tomorrow. This night, may that door be opened now. And I decree and declare, by the end of this conference, for many of you, you will stand and sing that song that Pastor Nat sang. See what the Lord has done. You will array your testimonies like trophies. And the nations will stand with you to celebrate the faithfulness of God. Let me pray for you finally. Everything that makes for spiritual laxity and lukewarmness, prayerlessness, wordlessness, associations around your life that are demonic and devilish and destructive, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, be separated from all of these things. The grace to pray, let it rest on you. The grace to study the word of God, 
let it rest on you high level spirituality may that grace rest on you in the name of jesus and for everyone who is a faithful worker and is connected to this vision this ministry standing by and standing with the man of god as he does what he does i pray for you we are praying for everybody but the bible declares that the worker is deserving of his wages i pray for you for the nights for the days for the moments for the sacrifices may the god of heaven who is able to reward men openly may he bring your reward speedily in the name of jesus and by the power of the holy spirit standing upon all the graces that are here present i pray for you that no one who has attended this conference will return back without a testimony let this be a new beginning for you in jesus name i pray amen and amen god bless you thank you Somebody give the Lord praise and thanks. Just wave those hands from side to side. Please don't rush off. Let's honor the presence of the Lord. We're almost done. You've waited this long. Let's wait to the very end as we share the grace together. Father, we just lift our hearts and our voices to thank you for the incredible open heavens we've enjoyed today. We give you the praise. We know that whatever you do abides forever. The healings are forever. The miracles are forever. The liftings are forever. The shiftings we experience, they are forever. The breakthroughs are forever. The open doors, open gates, open cities, open heavens, they are forever. Lord, with our clap, we celebrate you. With our shout, we honor you. Come on, people of God, let's give the Lord a praise that He alone is deserving. He is the doer of all that is wrought tonight. In Jesus' name, we give Him thanks. We just want to give those of you who came later in the service. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.